hi everyone welcome back to another video tutorial in today's video i'll show you how to make um this very pretty japanese note bag i have it here on my desk and you can see it in the video on the side of the screen uh for the materials you will need a pair of scissors a measuring tip i'll be using this to give you the exact measurements for my bag so that if you need to do the same exact then you can reference using a measuring tip uh, you also need a five millimeter crochet hook and then a yarn needle and two stitch markers so i have my two stitch markers here and let's get started so the yarn that I'll be using for this project is Red Heart Super Saver yarn and I'll be using the color red. So the first thing that you're going to do is to create a chain of 35. So you're going to make a slip knot. So I have my slip knot there and you're going to make a chain of 35. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have my 35 chains here. And these measure about 10 inches as you can see and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook placing one single crochet and then you're going to go all the way up or across the chain placing one single crochet into each and every chain So place one single crochet into each and every chain until you get to the second last chain. So when you get to the second last chain, into that second last chain you're going to place one single crochet and into the last one you're going to place a total of five single crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. And then you are going to turn your work to this side and you're going to place one single crochet at the back of the chain. Just go back onto the chain and place one single crochet into each and every chain. So while I'm placing my single crochets, I'm working around this tail so that it doesn't remain behind. Uh, this is familiar with how we work brackups when creating bralettes. You work around that tail so that you weave it in while you're working. So continue to place one single crochet into each and every chain 
until you get to the very last one. So when you get to the last one, the last chain there, you're going to place a total of one, two, three, and four single crochets. And after that, you are going to go into the very first single crochet that we made with a slip stitch. So this is what you should have. So you should have a total of 74 single crochets for this round. So going on to round two, you're going to chain one and that doesn't count as a stitch. That means into this very first space, you're going to place one single crochet and continue to single crochet once into each and every stitch around just place one single crochet into each stitch So when you come to this bend here, just keep placing one single crochet into each and every stitch. And then go to the opposite side, doing the same exact thing. So we are almost getting done with our second round. And you should have the same exact number of stitches as the first round. So I had 74 stitches for my first round. So I will have 74 stitches for my second round. If you can't eyeball the very first stitch, that's where the stitch marker comes in. This is my very first stitch. And make sure if you can't eyeball that stitch, then you need to um, mark it. So there's a false stitch in here. There's that bump there. That's not a stitch. Keep that in mind. There's a false stitch that's created when we are making the slip stitch. So we don't go into that. Make sure you always have your 74 stitches around or the number of stitches that you, you had for your very first round. But make sure it's always an even number. So we are done with the base of the bag. As you can see here, that's where we are right now, that line. Now we are going to start creating that rich texture of the bag that we have on both sides. Both sides look the same actually. As you can see so we're going to start creating that texture on round three so you're going to remove your stitch marker and sorry and you are going to slip stitch into the very first single crochet that you made 
So that's your very first stitch. So after the slip stitch, the slip stitch is placed into the very first single crochet of the round. So you're going to chain one and place one single crochet into the same stitch and that will be the very first stitch of the round. Mark it. And then you are going to go into the next stitch, but instead of going into the stitch, you're going to go to the stitch to the row below. So where that space where this stitch sits. So you can see the stitch is here and it sits into this space and place a single crochet like that. And then into the next stitch, you'll go into the stitch and for the next stitch you'll go into the row below where the stitch sits so you can see that hole here and place a single crochet like that into the next stitch place a single crochet in the stitch and into the next go into the row below and we are going to repeat this all the way around so for the very first rows it can be a little bit confusing to figure out but after like two rows everything will be more definite so just take your time and make sure you don't make any mistake especially on the foundation rows so up and down that's how i keep track of this stitch in the beginning stages you have seen me working with it um, in some of my projects I think I've made a bug with it before. So just go up into the stitch and down into the base of the stitch. So that's, this is what you'll have. It will work out itself later on. And you're going to continue doing this. And you should have the same exact number of stitches still for the third round. The number of stitches remains the same. Keep that in mind. Um, so up and down, up, down, up. So you're going to see your work starting to turn to face upwards as you complete row three or round three. You can see that. That means as we work, our, our flat panel is going to turn into something that can accommodate some stuff. So Just continue working until you get back to your stitch marker that you placed at the beginning of the round. So for round three, we are not yet seeing the texture at all. But as we go along, the texture will pop out more clearly. So I'm almost coming to the end and you can see the next stitch is up and the very last stitch should be down. So down into the space where the last stitch sits and place a single crochet there. And then you're going to remove your stitch marker and place a slip stitch into the very first single crochet of the round. 
so i need you to uh understand this the very last stitch has gone down because the first stitch was up so the fact that we are alternating up and down up and down that means um if you started with one up then you should end with one down so let's see that in the next row so you're going to chain one and this very first stitch is up you can see it was worked up into the stitch that means for the next row you're going to place a single crochet but down into where the single crochet sits and place a single crochet there and then mark the beginning of the round with a stitch marker and we're just going to continue um, the next stitch was worked down as you can see as you can see here this next stitch was worked down into the base of the stitch that means for this row it will get a normal single crochet so this one was worked up so we go into the base so that's how you determine which stitch to do for which um, for the next stitch so if it was worked up you go down into the base if it was worked down once you see a long strand here you work on top and keep alternating that all the way around Make sure your stitches are tight enough, not very tight, but don't leave um, big gaps behind. So we are coming to the end of our fourth round and I'm placing one single crochet on top of the stitch because the one below was elongated like that then remove your stitch marker and place a slip stitch into the very first stitch chain one and since the very first stitch was elongated was worked in the row below that means for this row um, we start with a normal single crochet into the stitch and then replace the stitch marker like that and then the stitch the next stitch was worked up that means it will get the elongated stitch and then this one has that long strand so you're going to it normally 
and continue to alternate between these two all the way around so as you can see the texture has started forming i don't know if you can see it here um the places where you're supposed to place uh, a, a normal single crochet and the one below are now more evident and you're going to keep working around until you have a total of eight inches i did eight inches for mine so you're just going to keep working around and you'll get something uh like this like a normal bag and then i'll meet you back at that point just keep working doesn't matter how many rows that you do just get to eight inches or however long you want your bag to be and then i'll meet you back to show you how to proceed from there Okay, so I went on to repeat the same round until I had a total of 8 inches all the way down. This is the opening of the bag and I have 8 inches downwards and on the side I have about 11 and a half inches. So I don't even know how many rounds that I did because uh, this stitch is very tight. And you can see we don't have see-through. Uh, the holes are very, very small. So just keep going until you have your 8 inches. And at the end of this round, I ended with a single crochet in the previous row. So I'll go into the very first stitch and make a slip stitch. And chain 1. Cut my yarn. And I'll put pull through so this marks the end of the body of the bag this is how the back side looks like or the front side both sides should almost be the same so now you're going to get two stitch markers and you're going to just lay your work flat like this and get the side stitches just place a stitch marker into the side panels the exact middle stitch on the side and do the same on this side I'll place it into this one and those are going to be the exact side stitches of this bag now you are going to count three stitches one so from the stitch marker you're going to count two stitches one two and into the third that's where we are going to be placing the strap and then same applies to this side you count one two and then into the third that's where you'll be placing the strap so we are now going to work on our straps so grab your yarn just put this aside grab your yarn and you're going to make a chain of 11 this is going to be the short strap so chain 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 so you're going to go into the second chain from the hook and place a single crochet and single crochet all the way along the chain placing one single crochet into each and every chain that so you should have a total of 10 single crochets and then you're going to chain one and turn your work and then single crochet into each and every stitch for a total of 10 single crochets as well so each row should have the same exact number of stitches across So you're going to repeat row 2 until you have a total of 25 rows and I'll meet you back at that point. Chain 1 turn, single crochet into each and every stitch. 
for a total of 10 stitches across. So I have my 25 rows all together for the short strap and now you're going to repeat the same thing for the long strap but this time instead of uh, chaining 11 you're going to just put this aside this is one of the straps just leave a long tail the moment you're done with it you'll chain one cut your yarn leaving a long tail and put it aside because we need to attach this strap onto the back then for the second strap you're going to chain six make a slip knot two three four five six and single crochet into the second chain from the hook continue to single crochet all the way down so for row one of the second strap you're going to have a total of five single crochets then chain one turn your work and single crochet into each stitch for a total of five stitches so you're going to repeat this until you have a total of 55 rows all together chain one turn single crochet into each and every stitch so you're going to build your strap all the way up until you have 55 rows for the second strap so I have my 55 rows and I'll show you how to wind off um, you can see I have my last stitch there you just chain one and cut your yarn from the yarn, yarn ball and leave a long tail and then pull through I skipped this part on the first strap so just do that so that you have two straps now you're going to get your yarn needle or darning needle and we are going to start attaching our straps so the first thing that i'm going to do is to weave in this tail the one that uh, finished off the bag i'm going to weave it in on the wrong side So after weaving it in, I'm going to cut this strand and now we're going to start attaching the, the straps. Sorry about this. I don't know what just happened, but okay. So we have these two stitches that we marked here. And you're going to get your yarn needle and get your first strap. You're going to get the tail on this side. And then count two stitches away from the stitch marker. So we have one, two, and you're going to start attaching from the third just attach stitch to stitch so you can go into the very first stitch two times then for the rest you just place one and then into the last you attach two times again just for security and once you have that you're going to go into the next stitch and push to the back of the work turn your work like this and you're going to weave in this tail just like we did for the other tail that we had at the end of the bag like that and then cut your yarn and you're going to get the next tail on this side make sure your strap is not twisted so make sure it's like this 
and we are going to count two stitches away from the stitch marker so one two and into the third you're going to attach two times like that and then into the next stitches you're going to just attach once just like we did on the other side and when it comes to the last one you attach two times one and two and then I'll just do one more here and then go to the back like that so our strap is secure right now just within the tail as well just go in and out of a few stitches And then you cut your yarn so the very first strap is done and at this point you can remove your stitch marker on this side we no longer need it we are now going to work on this side as well the stitch marker was here so we have this strap finished now you're going to get your second strap and this is going to be the shorter one so just thread your yarn needle like that and skip two stitches from the stitch marker so one two and into the third you're going to start attaching so two for the first one then in all the rest you're going to place one stitch and when it comes to the last one you're going to place two uh just attach twice and then go to the back of your work and weave in your tail at the back of the bag on the wrong side of the bag like that and then you cut your yarn now you're going to attach your very last one you're going to fold over your work like this make sure your strap is not twisted thread your yarn needle and skip two stitches from the edge one two and into the next you're going to start attaching so you attach twice for the first stitch and into the next stitches you attach only once all the way across until the second last stitch And into the very last one you're going to attach two times like that and then push your darning needle to the wrong side and weave in the tail as well Like that and then cut your yarn now we are going to remove the stitch marker from this side we no longer need it 
and at this point we are done with the general construction of the bag you can see this is shorter the shorter strap should be thicker than the longer one the longer one should be thinner now um, to make the Japanese tote bag not bag the Japanese note bag you're going to just bring the longer strand through the the shorter one and this is it this is how everything has worked out and that's how we make the Japanese note bag I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial and make sure I give it a thumbs up if you did and leave a comment in the comment section and let me know how you feel about this project I'll see you in my next video bye